Hello, third grade, and welcome to Unit 1, Lesson 3. Today we're going to be talking about Canada. And as we start this lesson, one of the things I want you to pay attention to is that you do need to answer this essential question. I've noticed that some of you are not doing it or you're skipping past it. Uh, please answer it with a complete sentence as best as you can and do whatever they are asking you to do in the words to know section. So for this section, your essential question says, how are places unique and different? So you're gonna tell me over here, what do you think? How are different places unique or different from one another? And for down here, find out what the last two words mean and write the name of a plant to go with each of the words. So, <coughs> you have the word tundra and you have the word arable land. So, you're going to look those up and find out what, what grows in a tundra, name a plant that grows in a tundra, and name a plant that can grow on arable land. So our lesson starts with the heading, Our Northern Neighbor, because Canada is above the United States, so it's our neighbor to the north. Canada is the largest country on the continent of North America. It is north of the United States. Oceans surrounded Canada on Oceans surround Canada on the east, west, and north. Canada has very tall, jagged mountains in the west and lower, more rounded mountains in the east. The land in the middle <coughs> has plains and grasslands. There are also many forests, rivers, and lakes. In fact, Canada shares four of the Great Lakes with the United States. The map and pictures on these pages show some of the different landforms in Canada. Can you locate the Rocky Mountains in the Great Plains on the map? So the word locate means to find. So can we find the Rocky Mountains on the map? So if we look over here at our map, map we see that the title is Canada Physical. So a physical map shows us what the land is like in that area. And we can see that the rivers are these little squiggly lines. The lakes are these bodies of water. We see that these are the Great Lakes right here. Now we also see that the Rocky Mountains are these kind of bumpy areas. So we can see over here is the Rocky Mountains and then over here is the Great Plains. So when our first question says, can we locate the Rocky Mountains? We can circle those right here. And the Great Plains, you can see a picture is kind of this these rolling hills, these low hills with grass and things that grow on them. You don't really see trees on, in the plains, just like in the United States in the plains, uh, you won't find a lot of trees, just kind of low grassy areas. What landforms do the United States and Canada share? So we go back uh, over here. It says, in fact, Canada shares four of the Great Lakes with the United States. So over here, you'll write using a complete sentence, Canada and the United States share four of the Great Lakes. And you see those right here. Now, as we look at this map, we can see that up here, the Arctic Ocean, we've got a picture of that. And you can see these large blocks of ice that are floating around in it. We see the Hudson Bay right here. We see the St. Lawrence River that runs right here out into the Atlantic Ocean. And we see Lake Ontario, which is one of our Great Lakes right there. Then I want you to answer this question. It says, use the map to describe the physical features of Canada. So tell me about the physical features. What are you seeing? We know we see the Rocky Mountains. We already talked about a couple other things that we're seeing around here. Describe those for me right there. Now, once you've completed that, we're going to go down to our next pages where we're going to be talking about climate and vegetation. When you think of Canada, do you think of a country covered in snow? It's true that most of Canada has long cold winters and short cool summers, but would you believe a rainforest grows in the western region of Canada? The west coast of Canada has wet, mild winters. The climate is great for evergreen trees, mosses, and ferns. Farther north near the Arctic Ocean is the tundra. The tundra is a treeless plain where only grasses and mosses can grow. So over here, you're already getting information to help you answer this question right here. So we just read about the tundra. Let's read about arable land. Canada has arable land too. Arable land is land that is good for growing crops. 
Some of Canada's best farmland is in the east near the Great Lakes and the St. Lawrence River. Wheat, barley, and soybeans grow well there during Canada's short summer. So there's an, your answer for arable land. <laughs> underline two things that grow in the tundra. So go ahead and underline over here. We see that only grasses and mosses can grow. So you're going to underline that sentence right there. And over here, they have a picture of the rainforest for you and a picture of what the tundra looks like. And you can see these are very, very different regions with very different climates. So depending on the part of Canada you're in, you're going to experience very different weather. You're going to see very different things in the land. Let's go on and read about Canada's resources. The forests in Canada, in Canada are one of the country's most important resources. Trees are used to build houses and make paper. Did you know that a lot of paper that newspapers are printed on comes from Canada? Canada is rich in other resources too. Part of Eastern Canada have, have large iron ore deposits. As you learned in lesson two, iron ore is used to make steel. Other mineral resources mined in Canada include gold, copper, silver, and nickel. Some of the energy resources found in Canada are coal, oil, and natural gas. Most of Canada's natural gas is east of the Rocky Mountains. So that means it's more towards the Rocky Mountains are here. It's the oil and natural gas are going to be towards the right. How are Canada's resources similar to the resources of the United States? So you can go back to our previous lesson and read about some of the resources found in the United States. And you'll see that some of them are the same and some of them are different. And you can write about those here. Down here, uh, we have a map of Canada's natural resources, and you can see that their map key or their legend right here tells you what each one of those symbols stands for, and you can see them scattered throughout the map of Canada. Which two natural resources are found near the Hudson Bay? So here is the Hudson Bay, and you can see a couple different things uh, right next to it. Take a look at your map key and tell me what those things are. Up here, you can also see a picture of the pipelines from Canada. Now, as we move on in this lesson, we're going to talk about the natural and the man-made landmarks. So natural landmarks are things that are already there in nature. People didn't have to build them or put anything there. They were already present. Man-made landmarks are important structures or buildings or things that people built in those areas. So the Horseshoe Falls on the, on the Niagara River are a natural resource that was already present. <clears throat> Fun fact, from high tide to low tide, the Bay of Fundy has one of the most extreme changes of water levels in the world. So this is a natural resource or a natural landmark um, found in Canada, the Bay of Fundy. Draw the way you think the Bay of Fundy looks in high tide uh, in the empty box on the right. So this is it at low tide when the water is kind of pulled away. Draw what you think it would look like in high tide when the water has kind of rushed back in. As you learned in lesson two, Niagara Falls is on the border between the United States and Canada. This natural landmark is a series of three huge waterfalls. The Horseshoe Falls is the part of the falls that is in Canada. Another natural landmark in Canada is the Bay of Fundy. So that's this right here. It is an inlet in Eastern Canada along the Atlantic Ocean. Most areas along the coast of the Bay, of, of the Bay experience very high tides and very low tides. Tides are the rise and fall of the ocean water. So like I was telling you, if you, if this is what it looks like at low tide when the water is really low, draw what you think this area would look like when the water level is high. Canada has many man-made landmarks too. One of the most famous is Parliament Hill in Ottawa, the capital of Canada. Many of Canada's government leaders work in this building. It was built over 150 years ago. Other man-made landmarks inc include the Calgary Tower in Calgary and the CN Tower in Toronto. So this is a picture of one of the man-made landmarks, which is a Parliament, which is Parliament Hill. How is Parliament Hill? like a building in your community. 
So if Parliament Hill is a building where people who work for the, for the country or the city all go, how is that similar to some of the buildings in your community? And then after you've used your complete sentence to answer that question, we're going to answer our essential question for lesson three. How are places unique and different? So we've learned about the United States and now we've talked about Canada. So tell me how places are unique. What makes them special? What makes them different from each other? Please remember to use your complete sentences. After you've finished all of these different sections and you've answered and underlined and circled and done all of the things that you were asked to do in these pages, you can go ahead and get started on your unit 1.3 quiz uh, about Canada. You can use your book for this. Um, so that's why I keep reminding you to please make sure you're using complete answers because it's going to be very helpful for you. I hope you do really well on your quiz and I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Have a great day. Bye-bye.